Today on Top Minister, you have apple cider, 12 books to read and one hour. Create meaningful, multivocal worship. I mean, hi, Internet and Melly. This is Casey, and this is 25 and 52. I'm getting a little silly in the face of the sort of do all the things of my life right now. I think that's probably for the best. Silly is a good way to respond to stress. Um, so far, this has turned into a really hilarious Facebook conversation with some of my classmates last night. Um, and while well, that beginning part of the video, which came out of today after class, my professor said something about next week we'll have a little time to revisit something we worked on today, and it'll be a quick fire challenge. And so in my head since class, I've been thinking about what would top minister in the style of top chef look like? You know, it makes sense. For some reason that I don't understand, I got a copy of Maxim in the mail today. I mean, I understand the reason somebody who lived here before had a subscription and didn't change it or cancel it, but I thought that I would, like, successfully mock it a la Cosmocking in this video, but no. No, no. I opened it, and then I threw it on the floor. Have I told you how in love with milk tea I've apparently become? pretty in love with milk tea. Yesterday I had a lavender one, and today I had a matcha green tea one, and sometimes I go to a place with a chubby cup, and sometimes I don't. I go to more than one milk tea place. So something I've been thinking a lot about this week, uh, particularly because one of the books that I'm reading talks about it a lot, but just in general is about challenging patterns. Um, it's amazing what making one big change can do for all the rest of the patterns in your life. For example, I am now a person who makes her bed every day, which is a thing that has literally never been true in my life. Literally never. Um, but of course I'm not just thinking about the changes that happened on the little level in my life, I'm thinking about you know, how do we really make change in society. And the book that I'm reading that brings this up uh, talks a lot about segregation and about how before schools were officially desegregated in America, um, there were definitely people of basically goodwill, basically, you know, good-natured people trying to do something good who didn't challenge the structure of segregation. They wanted to do right by people of color, but weren't willing to question the structure that made that real. So they were like, well, let's just make the separate really as equal as we can. But as we learned, <laughs> there's no way to do that in a structure that says that some people are inherently not as good as other people. There's no way to make equal happen if separate is because half of those people aren't good enough. Um, and I've been thinking about it a lot in just, you know, the context of making change in the world in general. To what extent are we just putting band-aids on wounds and leaving in place the apparatus that causes those wounds? It's probably a question that we should all ask ourselves a lot. Of course, that doesn't make it a comfortable question. Um, it's an uncomfortable question and it's an uncomfortable thing to do. When you have privilege, and I have quite a bit, and you know, anybody watching this probably has a good amount because, you know, the ability to use an internet conveys some amount of privilege. Um, it's hard to question the structures that gave you that ability. 
you know, if you look at all of the ways, like if you start to really be breaking down all of the ways in which you may have gotten things that you didn't quite deserve or things may have been easier for you than they would have been for somebody in a different circumstance, um, it can be really frightening to think about what happens if you get rid of that structure. That's just true. Um, and as much as I'm really committed to, you know, speak your truth even if your voice shakes, there are times when I don't. Because stepping over that line challenges something that I'm not ready to challenge. That's not necessarily good, you know, not necessarily the ideal way to do things, but it's real. And I think it's worth accepting that it's not always... Well, <laughs> not always. It's never as easy to challenge a social structure as it is to say, hey, we should challenge social structures. I totally lost that train of thought somewhere in there, so I'm gonna just leave it at what I've managed to do. But that's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about destroying structures that are oppressive. Yay! Destroying structures that are oppressive. That's my life. I gotta write a paper. I love you. Bye.